Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. So, ugh, I have so many ideas for videos for this channel and then never film them. I don't know what my problem is, but <laughs> I think about you all all the time and I think about filming content for this channel a lot and then, I don't know, get caught up in filming for the other channel and posting to Instagram and working at the job that actually pays the bills. <laughs> I have a full-time job, hanging out with family, all of that stuff. Well, it is the Friday before Christmas when I'm filming this, and it's super friggin' freaking cold. Like, most of the U.S. is in a frozen lockdown. <laughs> My friends in the Midwest, the central part of the country, have gotten slammed with snowstorms. And if they're not in snowstorms, they have freezing temperatures. Like, I have friends in Texas whose pipes are getting ready to burst because the cold front has affected them so terribly. Anyway, here this morning, it was really, really pouring and we thought we were gonna have black ice and we did not, but we had a lot of rain and now we have a lot of wind. So you may see the lighting up here change with the skylights as the trees sway and all of that. It's like 40 mile per hour winds. And I, so there's two things I wanna do in this video. Hope you got your coffee, tea, whatever, and you're ready to just hang out. I wanted to do I wanted to experiment with a cold girl makeup look because why should the young kids have all the fun? I think it's a really cute little trend and look, I know all about being cold. I grew up in New York City and I remember having a very flushed face most of the time as I was traveling to and fro from school or from shopping or whatever. So I'd love to figure that out what that looks like and it's a great time to do it because I have... I get obsessed with certain eyeshadow palettes where I think about them and want to reach for them. And the one that I've been thinking about very recently is the pastel palette from Natasha Denona, which is one that I've used a few times, but certainly haven't used as much as I would like because it is this, re look at this, I have not even taken the thing, anyway, we'll leave that alone, the sticker off of the mirror, but it's this really gorgeous pastel-y palette here that I haven't played with a lot. Although I really like it. I look at it a lot. I've used it a few times. I think for the cold, cold girl look, I may either do something in this range, like with these two blues or the purples, or maybe even this green turquoise -y. Would you call this a turquoise? What would you call this color? Whatever this is, aqua. This range here, maybe I'm going to stick with this range. Maybe these four right here and do like a cold girl ice queen kind of eye and then the whole thing about the cold girl look is that it's pink here like pinky or whatever color your cheeks turn when they're flushed and over over your nose so i don't know how that's going to work but we'll figure it out as we go and have a little bit of fun with that and i also have i have so many ideas for videos for this channel one of which is i'm looking down at my notebook this is my video notebook and if you watch my other channel you saw it in my recent top 10 fragrances video but I put all my video ideas down in this book. And one of the videos I've been thinking about is just chatting with you all about things that I no longer buy or will no longer buy and just chatting about the reasons why. So let's get into the makeup look and have a little fun talking about this. So I'm going to challenge myself and like not even do bronzer on my face and all of that, which is like my favorite makeup product. We're going to keep this all really light and flowy and and wintry okay so i but to let you know i'm gonna uh i've moisturized in all of that of course and i'm gonna use the bare minerals complexion rescue tinted hydrating gel cream and this is in the color 5.5 bamboo which is like a tinted moisturizer it's a nice alternative on days that you don't want to wear foundation in fact let's put this on first and i typically will put on quite a bit and then sort of blend it all in with a wet sponge so I have been thinking a lot about purchasing decisions. Pause, let's be clear, because <laughs> I know people go on no buys and all of these things. I, I don't do that, um, not because, and listen, I don't begrudge anyone their decision to do that. Like everyone has to make decisions about where and how they want to spend their money, on what they choose to spend their money on, and I have respect. You work hard for your money, and by no means should you let anyone on YouTube, social media, anyone else tell you how to spend your money. Actually, that's a lie. I let Susie Orman, remember her? Tell me how to spend my money. And I'm glad that I did because I made some really smart financial decisions and investments years ago thanks to her advice. So go check her out. But other than that, you work hard for your money. You should be able to do whatever you feel like doing with your money. If you want to spend a lot, what is this? Did I come on camera with crap in my hair? I did. Forgive me, friends. If you want to spend a little, if you want to spend a lot, it is absolutely your decision. You work for your money, right? As for me, I enjoy retail therapy. I do. I like shopping a lot and I'm not going to apologize for that. 
And I'm also not going to apologize for the things that I purchase. I budget for my purchases. I never, this is my own rule of thumb. I never, I charge stuff on a credit card, but I pay the credit card off before any interest accrues. I use a credit card for simplicity and I use it to get the rewards. So like I have a Marriott card and as I build up points, I get free nights. But I never like carry a balance from one month to the next ever. And of course, just a little bit of a sidebar, I absolutely account for all of my other important financial things before I put one single penny, my own decision, toward anything as flippant and unnecessary as makeup. Flippant is not the word, superfluous, superfluous as makeup or fragrance or anything. So that includes making sure all of the bills are paid, which, you know, we've worked hard and don't have a lot of bills, but like what's left of our mortgage payment, for example. I make sure that there's money in the kids' college accounts. I make sure that retirement is accounted for. I put some money away, all of that stuff. Okay, so like, let's be clear. All the important stuff is taken care of. And then I budget extra cash for fun stuff, products, things that I enjoy, clothing, etc. However, I really want to be a little bit better about where I spend my money so that my purchases bring me some happiness and some joy instead of misery or you know, have me questioning my, my decisions, my purchasing decisions. So let's like jump into the things that I have figured out. And it's not so much because of what they cost. It's more because I feel like they're just a waste in general, not just a waste of money, but like a waste of time and energy. So the first thing on my list, oh, I really didn't think through the format of this video. So we're just chatting y'all. We're just, just chatting. The first thing is I will not be buying extra vegetables or extra meat to freeze. I'm gonna buy only what we need for the next few days or for the next week. I used to buy once upon a time in bulk. I would buy for two weeks or a month at a time and then found myself locked into using whatever it was that I have purchased even if I didn't wanna eat that. So I'd like to just purchase for the next three or four days or the next week at the most. And then vegetables in particular, you know, it's this thing where you think you're going to eat a lot of them and you might, but there's also weeks where they just kind of rot in the fridge or fruit, same thing, vegetables and fruit, or you don't eat as much of them as you predicted that you might. So I'd like not to bring as much into the house so that I don't have to bother with throwing things away um, and just kind of throwing money out the window. You know, I mean, there's some food that's going to go bad in the fridge and it's just the nature of having a refrigerator and having food that you can preserve over time. Some of it's going to eventually just go bad or whatever and you throw it out. Okay. But I can also help keep the fridge less cluttered by buying the stuff that I think we're really going to consume for the week. The concealer was the Power Fabric Concealer from Armani and Old Fave, and it's in the color four. And I'm making my way, you guys. I've had this thing for years, and I actually have a second one waiting to be used. It's the Maybelline Fit Me loose finishing powder and this is in the color 20 light medium love this stuff rivals any high-end or luxury powder any day of the week really fantastic texture so that's the first one and then i realized <laughs> this past maybe year i've been sitting on this thought here for a year that i have way too many too too many too many body sprays that i don't use I much prefer to reach for an actual fragrance and I think I was kind of fooling myself purchasing body sprays and I have to say although I'm a little surprised I'm gonna say this out loud the same thing goes for lotions so I've gone crazy at the Bath and Body Works various sales over the past few years I've been really really good probably since about summertime of this year 2022 and not going crazy at the Bath and Body Works sales. So, but because I realized I don't reach for the sprays, the body sprays, they're very nice. I don't have a problem with body sprays. I think they smell fantastic. I just, for whatever reason, I can't describe why, don't reach for them and don't want to layer them. In fact, I have gotten into this like rut, I don't even know if you call it a rut, but like in general, I, I'm not a layerer. On occasion, I'll layer two fragrances because I do like experimenting. But I don't, as a matter of daily routine, layer a lotion or an oil plus a fragrance. I will, but it's not a habit, if that makes sense. So therefore, do I really need, does it make sense for me to have, I don't know what I have, maybe at this point I'm down to 10 body sprays, but even that feels like too much. And I have probably 20 lotions. Of those 20 lotions, what is it that I think about the most? I love my coconut lotions, but I have like three bazillion of them. I love the Sol de Janeiro Boom Boom Cream. I love the Trader Joe's Coconut. 
cream. Hang on, so let me show you. I have others that I like and enjoy, but I don't reach for often. But this is a staple, the Boom Boom Cream. I just love, oh God, this is so delicious. The Trader Joe's Coconut Body Butter is fabulous. The Laura Mercier creams are super expensive, but they really smell good. This is almond coconut, and I, I want another one. I want whatever matches up with the Ombre Vanille, and of course, I'm forgetting the name right now. Skin Potions, Royal Sandalwood, and the Kama Sutra, super, super good. Thank you, Evelyn, for these gifts, by the way. And anyway, I have some others that I like. I love the Boardwalk ta Taffy. I was going to say Toffee. The Boardwalk Taffy from Bath & Body Works. So I like the idea of lotions and sprays more than actually using them. Does that make sense to you? So I really don't reach for them, and they're taking up a lot of room. So let me pause to see what is it that we're going to go into. I'm really drawn to these three. So I'm going to stop resisting the urge to go to these and just play with them. Anyway, so I need to figure out who do I want to give my body sprays and lotions to that would appreciate them and get some use out of them because they're really good. I just don't reach for them as much as I'd like. So I want to just keep maybe two body sprays and maybe just those four or five lotions and then let everything go, y'all. I don't, I don't need 3,000 lotions to layer with my fragrances. Okay, so I'm going in with that. This color is called Brisk, which is perfect, like Brisk Air. Brisk Cold Air. Ooh, and this one is called Mint Frost. Perfect for the cold weather. And then that one is <laughs> and then that one is called Adriatic. And I might go in here with Illusion, maybe in the corners of the eyes or whatever. So let's get to it. I am also, and I, and I have not purchased for years now, shave cream. I've always said this. You all, you don't need a separate shave cream. Like if you want to shave your legs or your underarm area or whatever, just use just use conditioner it's it's gonna give you a better finish on your skin after you're done shaving i've never like enjoyed using shave cream and never found that they made a huge difference that you can't have just like with conditioner so i'm going to continue to not purchase shave cream moving on to number four this year we made the decision to no longer have cable so we had like a bundle of our cable and our internet service and then realize we really don't watch a lot of cable. I used to, used to, <laughs> I used to watch a whole bunch of Real Housewives shows. And I love them. I still, I'm, I'm here for the trashy TV. You know, some people are like, oh, it rots your brain. Whatever. I enjoy watching all of that craziness. Those women sign up for that, okay? And they get paid for it. They get paid to give us drama. So I don't really feel sorry for them or anything. Like, they, they know what they're getting themselves into, y'all. Anyway, I just look at it as entertainment. I don't know that I should have brought this all the way to the inside. Let me let me mat that down a bit. But, and then my husband would watch football, but then we realized we can get all of that content on other, like streaming media. So I downloaded the Peacock app. And when I get a hankering for Real Housewives, I just watch it on there, which has not been often. Granted, I've been, more than anything these days, I've been consuming YouTube and Instagram and maybe TikTok as my media. I don't really watch a lot of TV. My husband watches a lot of movies. So he has like a Netflix subscription and that works. So he'll watch a movie and I'll watch YouTube on my headphones and that's how we hang out together and, and we don't watch like TV TV anymore. So cable's gone. We still have obviously internet. I'm gonna pick up that Adriatic eyeshadow here. That one and this one which have some shimmer to them. Well, maybe, maybe mint frost could be considered a metallic, I think. Anyway, I'm gonna spray my brush with, this is the Charlotte Tilbury, <laughs> Charlotte Tilbury uh, setting spray. I'm gonna pick it up with this so that it doesn't dribble down my face and it could actually stick to my eyeball. So I'm also no longer buying EGAD books. Hang on, I have an explanation. DVDs or CDs of any sort. For me, the way that I consume literature is through audiobooks. That's my joy. I really enjoy a good audiobook. I'm listening to Pillars of the Earth. Yes, the last time we talked about audiobooks, I said I was going to get Pillars of the Earth. And would you believe I'm still trying to get through it? It's like 40 hours on audiobook. And I think I'm on hour number four because I have to listen to it in little chunks. It's a pretty intense, intense listen. I was going to say intense read, but it's an intense listen. And then music, I have Spotify. And so I pay, I think it's $9.99 a month to have unlimited access to all the music I can imagine. There's some music that's not on there because the artists will not allow it. Copyright and yada, yada, blah, 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 right? But, and then I create various playlists and I've come across so much fun music through Spotify and creating lists that way. Musics that, musics, musics, musics that I would have never otherwise been exposed to. And it's really fun. I really love what is the category that's called world music. 
which is a very obviously ethnocentric view to think that if you're in the US, everything else is world music. Like the rest, anyway, I won't get into all that here, but that's what the category is called. And it includes what is referred to as tribal or native music in other areas. I'm not gonna get into all the politics of that, y'all. That's what it's called, okay? So I consume that a lot. Oh, wait a minute. Do I wanna get fun and maybe layer this instead of that? Or is that gonna get a little crazy? Let me experiment here so that we don't make a mistake. So this is the color that is on my eyelid right now. It's called Adriatic. Let me layer over that with, this color is called Dainty and see what happens. Do they play well together? Yeah, they do. They do. Ta-da! Let's do that. So I'm gonna pick up, and this is the color in the corner, Dainty, and I'm gonna do it in the middle of my eye. Eyelid, not the middle of my actual eyeball, imagine. <laughs> so moving along, Recently, I started to declutter in our bedroom. And one of the things that got on my nerves that we have too much of is bedding. Do you? It's so bulky. I'm talking about like comforters, sheets, blankets, everything. Do we really need 10 sets of sheets, for example, for our bedding? No, we do not, friends. At least I don't feel like I do. So I started to donate a lot of that stuff. And now I only have two sets of sheets for the winter which are flannel. I love me some flannel sheets <laughs> and two sets for summer. And that's it. They take up a lot less room. I can put them all in one drawer and be done with it, you all. So that was a big relief. And the same thing with comforters. I don't like this. Now I don't like what the heck I did with my eyeballs. Y'all, this is why. This is why. This is why I can't have them. This is why you can't have nice things. This is why I can't have a makeup channel because this is the kind of nonsense I pull off. Ay, yeah, yeah, y'all. Anyway, bear with me. I'll try to figure out how to clean this all up. So I'm sorry, I took the color Illusion and now I'm packing that on top of everything else, which is probably gonna create a very muddy look. So moving along, so bedding, right? Bedding will not be purchased in bulk in the coming year. I'm done, like I'm good. We have our four sets of sheets. We have our couple of comforters that we're gonna rotate through and that's it. We don't need to continue to buy bedding, including pillows. I need to be better about that because I like getting those big, crazy seasonal pillows. Y'all have been on a couple of trips with me while I try to look for those so I'm trying to put a little bit oh yeah I like the way that looks up there I don't want to drag it all the way out I just want it right there to give it a little bit of little, little bit of pop so next up is knickknacks and any kind of tchotchkes and figurines I've been really good about not buying those things in the past five years I just think that honestly well I grew up with a lot of those my parents still have them all over the house they have like entire shelves with nothing but tchotchkes and knickknacks knickknacks paddywax is what I call them <laughs> And I just, I can't, I feel like they are so messy. I'd rather have just a couple of big items on a shelf that I think are cool. Uh, it's an area of tension with my husband and I because he likes some little tchotchkes like from vacations and stuff like that. And I'm like, babe, we gotta, we gotta get rid of them or bolt them together or something. I don't like them all over the house. They're too little and it makes your eye jump around way too much in a space, my own opinion. If you have tchotchkes and figurines and you like them, Fine, I'm so glad that you do. I'm not sure that they're for me, so I'm gonna continue to not purchase those. And this next category, I'm not sure if I'll stick with this, but it's vitamins and supplements. Except for one, I have a collagen powder that I purchase and put in my coffee. I do two scoops of it every day, and it has helped my otherwise super brittle nails get strong. It's helped me continue to grow my hair out. Like you see this gray, like my hair grows out a lot faster now. I do have concerns that perhaps it's growing out um, Anyway, I'll get into all the concerns. So I wonder about that for the long term. I don't like this look. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. I'm going to muck it up even more with that mint frost. Let's, let's add that in right there. I have officially layered way too much onto my eyeballs, but we're just going to keep going with this because I'm committed. <laughs> I'm committed. Oh. So anyway, vitamins and supplements, mostly because... That stuff is not really FDA regulated. And I just, I don't know about the long-term effects of those. We don't know about the long-term effects of a lot of stuff that we choose to consume, including the collagen powders. Like, let's get real about that. But for some reason, I'm a little bit more leery of unregulated supplements, like that whole business, except for maybe like a B complex, B complex. And I have other supplements that I've taken and I'm not saying that they don't work and don't have a benefit. I'm saying that the fact that they're unregulated and yet they have such audacious claims about what they do, that kind, that kind of bothers me. I am going to go under my eyelid with this color here 
yeah, let's see how that works out. And here's one that I've really thought about recently. Do you guys remember that Sephora haul that I did, that video? This was maybe like a month or two ago. And I said that I was purchasing some items strictly because the packaging was cute. Now that has its own downfalls, of course. But you guys, there's also the reverse, the packaging that, and it doesn't matter if it's inexpensive or high end, but packaging that is either unappealing or flimsy looking, I don't care if it's just 50 cents or $50. I don't want it. Like I want, I want the packaging to be somewhat pleasing. It doesn't have to be all about the packaging. I don't think I like any of this. What the hell am I doing with this look? But anyway, the packaging, let's talk about it. So like, for example, here are two drugstore highlighters, the Wet n Wild, and then this is a Revlon highlighter. This one is a little bit better. It's a little sturdier, right? Clips nicely. This one feels light and it doesn't, it doesn't even click. It's yeah. So what that it's only two or three dollars to, and I don't like all the wording. It's just really cheap looking. I don't like the way they put the sticker on it. This, it's a little beat up because I've had this for a long time, is better. And the way that the pattern is embossed on the powder is attractive also. So here are, here is an example of, well, this has a nice little floral pattern too. But anyway, an example of two drugstore products where this one wins because the packaging is better than this one. And then here's an example of two maybe higher end highlighters. Here's a Becca highlighter where the packaging is nice. It's got a little mirror. I don't need mirrors, but it's nice that it has a mirror. The embossing is pretty. It clicks nicely. It's pleasing to hold, to look at, to play with. And here's an example of one that could potentially be cute, but the packaging is so aggravating because it doesn't fit well. It doesn't play well with anything else. I think, look at how much room that takes up. Anyway, I don't want obnoxious packaging and I don't want cheap packaging. I will take some, some flaunty packaging. I will take some really artistic packaging like the Mothership palettes from Pat McGrath. That I will do, but Anyway, like here's another beautiful, simple package. This is an Ofra highlighter. You'll see this again in a favorites video. Really nicely done, aesthetically pleasing, nice and compact compared to this, which has cute artwork, but it's just, it's so annoying to handle. Anyway, you get the idea. So makeup that has either bargain packaging or obnoxious packaging that's hard to handle, I don't, I don't want it in my life anymore. Speaking of highlighter, I'm gonna go in with this frosty one in the inner corner and again up here at the very sort of peak. Moving along to other I'm not gonna purchase items, latest makeup releases, unless it's something that I am genuinely interested in. I'm not gonna do any more of this purchase out of curiosity nonsense. It's gonna have to be something that I really am interested in, mostly because honestly, y'all, I just, I don't have room. I don't have room. Like my drawers, my makeup drawers are busting at the seams with products that I have purchased and I need to actually declutter. Oh, that I like, let's do that. Let's add a little bit of that right there. Boom, now we're looking a little ice cleany. So that's one, no new makeup releases. Excuse me, not the latest makeup releases, unless it's something I'm super, super interested in. Like if it's a Mothership palette, I'm probably gonna check it out. If it's a Natasha Denona palette, I'm probably gonna check it out. That's gonna happen. Magazine subscriptions. I haven't purchased a magazine subscription in a long time. I used to have several of them and I enjoy looking through magazines, but the fact of the matter is that now I just look through my phone, like back before the smartphone era, which was when, like when did I really get into smartphones? I would say about 2010-ish is when I got my first real, like a Blackberry and really got into the smartphone thing. But now I just I just look on my phone. Anything that I could look for in a magazine, it's available on my phone or it's available on Google. And so, you know, unless I just don't have access to internet and then I love the practice of like flipping through a magazine and actually handling the pages. And I love the way magazines smell, but I'm not doing any more magazine subscriptions. I'm gonna stop purchasing perfumes that smell similar to each other. So that one is particularly difficult because of the other channel. And the fact that people will recommend things to me that I'm like, oh, that sounds really great. I want to try it. And you go down this rabbit hole where you buy like 10 fragrances that smell like Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. Or five fragrances that smell like Spiritus Double Vanille from Guerlain. And next thing you know, you have a lot of the same thing and then you don't love any of them, right? Well, not quite. Something like that. Something in that realm of problems that develop. <laughs> So I'd like to reduce my collection. That's another thing I'm going to be doing tonight is going through my fragrance collection and going with no more than two, maybe three if there's something I really love that smell almost identical, almost identical. There's no need to have like Baccarat Rouge 540 and it's 349 dupes. Do I really need seven fragrances that smell like Baccarat Rouge? Because I think I'm sitting on about that now. So that's enough. 
that's enough of that madness. They're not gonna be used and they can go to homes that they'll be loved in. The same thing goes for makeup, which is really hard, but makeup that looks exactly like something I have. It's a little bit different in the makeup world than in the fragrance world because in fragrance, it either smells like something else or it doesn't. In makeup, it can look like something else, but not perform like something else. And I've had that experience where I've purchased, I went down this rabbit hole when I got into makeup, like heavy, heavy, got into makeup. Maybe, oh my gosh, look how uneven <laughs> the bottoms of the eyebrows are. Wow. When I got heavy into makeup, I would say back in like 2016, 17, that time frame, maybe 2015, somewhere in there, um, where I didn't want to purchase the very expensive eyeshadow palette. So I would go buy the dupes. Do you remember there was a company whose name I cannot remember? And all they did, I don't think they're in business anymore, they made dupes of high-end palettes like Natasha Denona, and I would go buy those. And then I'd sit there and go, wait a minute, this isn't performing the same as that high-end thing. I noticed, especially with makeup, like with fragrance, it either, like I said, it smells like the thing or it doesn't, maybe it's a little bit of a scratchier version or a smoother version or whatever. With makeup, things can look the same, like I can probably find a palette that has similar colors, but the performance, the application, all of that is completely different. So I'm talking about not duplicating products that have all of those things going on together. They look the same, they perform the same, you know, all of that stuff. I don't need that, right? I don't need 493 neutral palettes of color, eyeshadow color. I don't need 300 warm eyeshadow palettes or 300 cool ones that have similar tones. Maybe a handful, maybe a handful. Don't, can I get stick with a handful? The same thing goes with makeup brushes. I have a whole video that I posted about how I've organized my makeup brushes and I've had way, way too many and kept way more than really work for me. So I've narrowed my makeup brush collection down to a lot, <laughs> but the ones that I really think I will use the most and that bring me the most joy, like I enjoy picking them up, they feel good in the hand, I know they perform well on the face with all different kinds of makeup, all of that, and I have a box of makeup brushes that I no longer use and plan to give away to someone who wants them. But what I found with the makeup brushes is that they were taking up a lot of room on my counter. And it's the same thing here, like I purchased a lot of cheap makeup brushes, and cheap I mean inexpensive, but they also in this case ended up also being cheap in performance. I do have some inexpensive makeup brushes that perform really, really well, and those are still in the collection. But the point that I'm making is that to, just like on principle, I bought some cheap brushes that just weren't doing it and it was time to send them on their way and keep only those brushes that were really, really doing the job well. Next is sort of a general category of something I really do need to stop doing because I'm bad about it, and it's stop buying stuff just because it's on sale. I've done that with fragrances a lot, and sometimes I'll do that with makeup, and sometimes I'll do it with other things. And it's just like, it's another way to spend more money that you probably didn't just didn't need to spend. And ending up with things, things, things that you actually don't use the way you think that you would use them. So I just need to be a little bit more aware and conscious. Are you purchasing this because this is something that you think you will like and enjoy? Or are you just like mesmerized by the fact that it's on such deep discount? An example of that is Pat McGrath is currently having a 40% off site-wide sale. There are exclusions, but I'm already on there like, ooh, I think I need this blush and I have to pause and say, do I really want that blush? I don't need another blush. I have blushes in every color from here to kingdom come. Do I truly want this and think that it will be equal to or better than something I have in my collection already? Speaking of which is stopping the practice of buying something in every color. For example, if I like a particular foundation, I have like winter shades and I have summer shades. Do I really need to buy two winter shades and two summer shades? If I like a specific formula of lipstick, like, I'm going to give you an example. Lisa Eldridge, I really, really, really want to buy some of her lipsticks. Do I need 10 or can I get maybe two? Can I get two? A red one and like a pinky nudie one and be happy? Or do I really need the collection of 10? You Lisa Eldridge fans out there will say, get all 10. <laughs> and I don't blame you. I probably would advise you to do the same. But just to kind of slow down and be a little bit more aware of what I'm purchasing and whether it's something that I will actually get use out of or not. So I'm gonna use something I haven't used in a while, speaking of that, and it's a NYX Wonder Pencil, it's called, and it's in the color light. And I'm just gonna do the waterline with this to kind of enhance that Snow Queen thing. Here's the color, it looks a little grody. Ooh, 
Ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so dramatic. My husband and our daughter are out shopping right now, doing like last minute Christmas shopping. I think some of it is for me. They're gonna come home and be like, what, are you okay? What? What's wrong? They're gonna say this, what's wrong with your eyes? <laughs> That's what they're gonna say. I'm like, she's been playing in the makeup again. Mama's been playing in the makeup again. Holy nastiness, I don't like this at all. But I'm gonna double it up in the upper waterline because I commit, friends. Oh my God. Please keep watching the channel even though I just messed up this entire look. Thank God we're not going anywhere. How embarrassing would it be to take me out in public right now? She done bumped her head again playing with that makeup. <laughs> Maybe we should leave the trends to the young people. Veronica, maybe. Ooh. Okay, let's get on with the real part of the cold girl look, which is, I think I'm supposed to put like a pinky blush thing up here. You're supposed to do it higher, not in your usual blush spot, a little higher and then across the bridge of the nose. So let me figure out what color that should be. <laughs> I keep looking at this and going, oh my God, people should not trust me with makeup. So I'm gonna use the Milani this is a blush, and this is a baked powder blush in Dolce Pink. It looks like this, that's, that's a bright pink. So hopefully I don't like further obliterate this look. Okay, we're gonna go high. I'm doing it high. Do I look flush? Do I look like I've just come in out of the cold? <laughs> Does it look cold girlish? I think I just look sick. I think I look like I have a fever or something. I always put a little bit of blush up in the eyeshadow look just to tie the th two things together. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know what I'm doing here. Let's, let's just scatter some. Okay, let's pause there. <sighs> this has gone left. What else do I want to not buy or buy less of makeup wipes? I don't have makeup wipes anymore. I used to have these Neutrogena, the one in the blue packet. I think they're Neutrogena wipes. Hold on. The other thing that you're supposed to do is highlighter here and across your nose. So I think... I think I'm gonna swirl all of this for that effect. So yeah, makeup wipes, because I end up not using them anymore and I really do find that makeup remover balms are much better. How's that for like a little frosty look? Do I look frosty and dewy? <laughs> and then I'll just wrap this up. This was, oh, I forgot to say, this was 22 items that I will no longer buy or continue to not buy. Do I look like, do I look like a snow bunny or do I look like a hot mess? Don't answer that. Yes, you can answer that, I'm just kidding. But white nail polish, I really need your advice. I like white nail polish and I have a few. My problem, and it's not just white, it's other lighter color, any pastel-y colors. I always feel like I have to put on 10 coats to get you know, an opaque look. And I welcome your recommendations because so there are some of you out there that are really into nail polish. Julie G in Canada, I'm looking at you. What would you recommend for white nail polish that really works and you only have to put on a coat or two? I'm going back over this whole highlighter thing with the blush. This is, this is not a look for me. <laughs> this is not a look. The, the last three things, shoes. Why? Because I have all the shoes, y'all. I could possibly need in my closet. In fact, I need to declutter. I have shoes for every known occasion except for like snow boots. I don't, actually that's not even true. I have snow boots. I have some downstairs. I lie. That I've had for probably 15 years because we don't get a lot of snow. I don't, I rarely if ever need them. So I've had those for forever. And then coats because I'm in central Virginia. I have so many beautiful coats, both like warm weather, bulky coats, and I have coats that are for business wear, cutesy coats, I have all kinds of coats 
that maybe get worn once every few years because we're always like from the house to the car to the place back to the car back to the house we're never really like outdoors for long periods of time and two very rarely does it get cold for super long stretches here in virginia like today it's super cold and we might get another week of super cold weather but otherwise it'll be cool but not enough for like super bulky coats the same thing with other outerwear hats scarves gloves which i love i love to buy that stuff so so much i adore that stuff and I think it's cute and I like buying it, but then I probably have like eight outerwear scarves and I maybe wear one or two once or twice a year. I don't know y'all. Let's do lips. And I think the idea here is to do like a dark color in the middle and then a gloss. That, those were the directions. I think her name is Kelly Strack, Kelly Stacks, Kelly Strack, Stracken. I'll put her picture here. <laughs> she had a little Instagram reel about how to do the cold girl look. So I'm trying to follow her wonderful direction okay so let's try to finish up this look and get this hair down and see how this worked out so she said to take a dark color i hope this isn't too dark and just kind of pat it into the middle <laughs> oh my god i fire myself from youtube for this what the heck am i doing here god. and then to put gloss on top of that i don't like this white thing i look like a weird like marionette doll or something so this is color pop in the color champagne miami no champagne mommy mommy miami <laughs> color pop ultra glossy lip oh i've had this thing for years i'm so embarrassed by how awful this turned out oh my god my friends this is a case study in stick to what you know <laughs> So here it is. Here's my cold girl look. Hold on, let me model for y'all. How do the YouTubers and Instagrammers model? They always do the open mouth, like, and they do like the sultry eye. They schmize with their eyes. <laughs> Am I doing it right? So here we are. Hold on, let me adjust. Let me adjust. There we are. There's the look. It's not half as bad as I thought it was going to be, but I don't know that I want to be repeating this look often. It was like circus clowny. Okay, all right. I think I can rock this at least for the end of the day. Look, if you stay this long, you, as Richard Keacott would say, you're a real one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Drop in the comments buying habits that you want to continue because you think they're good for next year or buying habits that you want to change for next year for whatever reason, for financial health, for financial sanity, because it's just more logical and makes sense. Whatever it is for you, let us know in the comments and let me know how would you rate this cold girl look on a scale of one to 10? I'm going to give myself a five or six-ish not nearly as awful as I thought it was going to turn out like mid-process. So thanks for hanging out with me. Mwah! Love you guys. See you in the next video.